wonders of the internet. You know, the internet just lets you find all kinds of talented people and things of that nature. So I had the pleasure of meeting her through the uh, internet and she's been involved in the music business for a number of years. You know, we've got a couple of folks here on uh, our platform, the IBM.TV folks that have spent some time in Nashville. One of our, one of my co-hosts is Alexandria May. She's actually in South Africa, but uh, of course, spend some time between Nashville and uh, South Africa. And because of COVID, she is actually now spending more time in the uh, area of um, the uh, South African part. I believe she's in around Johannesburg or something like that. But she definitely still has friends in Nashville. And I've got some friends in Nashville as well, or friends that have had ties to the Nashville music industry. Of course, I know Tiff Merritt, who is based here in North Carolina, but she has definitely performed in Nashville and done a lot of work with our Nashville musical scene. And of course, Nancy Middleton has done a, quite a bit of work in Nashville as well, but is now uh, living here in the Durham area where she is originally from. And Reese Palmer, who a lot of folks know from some of the reality shows, is in this area, but has definitely spent time in Nashville and around the world. So those are just some of my Nashville folks. So glad to have a new friend here, Christy Baker, who is a uh, great musician, and I would love to hear more about her uh, story as to how she got involved in uh, the music industry and uh, when she first started singing. I'm thinking that she might have been a child prodigy, or maybe she was a later in life person, but I am thinking she was actually a child prodigy. So tell folks how you first got involved in the music business. Well, I was I was pretty young. Um, I I remember sitting up in the in the. And thanks for having me on, by the way. Before I get started here, I was pretty young though, and I started um, thinking about music and listening to Elvis on the radio and doing that. And you know, I just got into it. And uh, I sat up in my car and I in the car with my parents when I was about, I think I was about nine or something. And I told them, I said, I'm gonna be on the radio someday. And they just, you know, they kind of shrugged it off. And then as time went on, I got, did more and more with the music and singing. And then I was about 15 and I, I uh, started writing. And that's when things sort of opened up for me is, is the writing uh, is a big part because you get to put a lot of your heart into it. So that helped a lot. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I just kept doing it. And then it was around, I, I'm trying to remember now, it's around 2009 that I moved here from North Carolina, actually. I am actually born and born and raised around the Outer Banks, and I was actually born in Elizabeth City. Okay. So I went to high school at Manio High School in North Carolina. Um, so I'm a North Carolina girl. So. Yeah. yeah. It was cool that you found me. Oh, yeah. So. so what was it like, the music scene growing up as a kid in North Carolina? You said that you definitely had some interest in music as a kid, but was there an active music scene that you remember as a kid when you were living there in the beach? Or is it something that you really found greater in uh, the Nashville area? Or did you find a strong scene in uh, the Outer Banks as well? Uh, on the Outer Banks as well, during, uh, I used to go and do things with chorus, and um, I was in chorus during high school, and then we did talent shows and things like that, and our talent shows were pretty hard. You had to do like three auditions to get on it, and um, there was like, I think there was 500 people at the talent show when I was uh, probably 18, almost 18, 17 and a half, so... Um, I did that and uh, then I went on, you know, had children. And so uh, it, it kind of a mix between raising children and trying to do the music. But the thing that most people need to hear if they're into the, doing the music and it's in their heart to do it, it's a God given talent. They should never give up on it. So you just keep trying and you keep just be yourself. And yeah, you definitely have to be yourself in the music industry. Now, did I hear you correctly? Did you say there were 500 people that auditioned? I know that there couldn't have been 500 in the show. So how many were in the show? There was 500 people that showed up to watch it. Okay. 
So that was a large crowd for me at that time because I had, you know, I'd sang in front of about seven, 75 people, 70, you know, stuff like that, little in family gatherings. Um, my um, uncle was a drummer, my uncle Daryl, um, and also my uncle Doug, he was a guitar player. So we had musical talent in the family. And then on the other side of the family, um, my grandma was going to be uh, on the Grand Old Opry radio show. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but like she was going to be on that, but her dad told her no, because she was only, you know, back then the parents were strict. So she was only around 11 years old. So they said, absolutely not. So she didn't get to do that opportunity. And she shared a lot of her musical dreams with me growing up. So well. And who were some of the folks that inspired you? Were there certain musicians that you really loved? And were they all like out of the country environment? Were they out of the folk environment? Um, I don't know. I know a lot of people are big fans of like folks like uh, Tammy Wynette and of course Dolly Parton. And then there are folks that like Bonnie Raitt out of the blues, which is one of the categories of music that I love. But who were some of the folks that inspired you? Mine was quite different. I started out like doing rock and like it was stuff like Heart and Pat Benatar and stuff like that. I started out doing that. Um, and that, you know, of course, I'm going to give away my age here, but that was in the 90s. So like I started doing that. And then I just, uh, I fell in love with country music because it has such a heart into it. And I, my grandparents did have a farm. And so I was always kind of a country girl anyway. You, know, you just kind of get in and work, work very hard, very, very hard. Okay, so, you so I, go ahead. So it just made me fall in love with the whole like heart of it all. You know, the, the, the lyrics are very important in a song. Um, and so like I fell in love with like some of the heart of country music. And so uh, definitely I liked uh, Dolly Parton and um, George Strait and all that. And now um, I actually have friends that are in the country music business. Um, Jimmy Wayne and um, very Christian, very good person, um, helps a lot of people. I mean, just amazing well. artists. And were you involved at all in uh, your church or your family's church? And so did you do anything with like the gospel music scene or anything of that nature? Because I do know like quite a few musicians will actually be involved in gospel as well. So I was wondering whether you had any of that involvement. Well, I would go um, and travel to different churches with chorus and we would do things there. And then also friends would invite me and I'd do like a trio, like at a Christmas show and stuff like that. Um, but I've always had a strong faith in the Lord. I, I have to say, though, uh, in all honesty, I don't um, go to church as much as I, before the COVID, I, I didn't go to church as much as I would have liked. Um, some of it's because I just worked so hard. Some of the days that I had off was only on Sunday before this. So. And um, did you say that you... Uh, are performing at all? Because like I said, we had a couple of guests on that have been musicians. And of course, COVID has definitely been impacting them. They've not been able to do as much because of COVID. So I was wondering how it was impacting you in terms of getting performances. So how many performances are you doing? Are you getting by your studio? And is it a studio that you have yourself? Or are you using one of the uh, bigger studios or one of the medium-sized studios there in Nashville? No, this is, this is actually my studio. Um, in my in my home and so we usually we recorded all our music here um and uh Bo uh is my fiance I met him um it was in 2011 I had met Bo and he's my guitar player um I'm actually learning the piano um and I'm I'm doing pretty good at it so far but um I'll share that as I get more practice in but yes I'm in my studio and no um we haven't had as as uh, much work, but I've had more people and more opportunities that are coming up after this is over. So there's going to be some huge opportunities for me coming up. So um, very huge. So I've had some a lot of a lot of help. So when uh, this is over, 
then y'all get to see me more, a lot more. So are you feeling optimistic about the live performance scene? So do you think that we're going to see, because I know a lot of the musicians are not thinking about any music happening in the rest of this year, 2020, but there are some speculation that we might be able to get music going again in 2021 or definitely by 2022. But what is your feeling about the music industry? And do you think that we will get back to performing the way that we used to? I think we will get back to it, but it's not going to happen this year. It's definitely not. You can tell it's just not going to happen this year. Um, actually, we're getting more and more cases, and so you don't want to get, um, you definitely don't want to expose somebody who's vulnerable. You know, you just don't want to do that. So I would just uh, say that it's, it's going to be a year or two, I, I would think. So you say it's going to be a year or two before we get to anything uh, in terms of actually um, getting performances in terms of the way that you're thinking that things will work out. So that's going to be sad news for a lot of uh, musicians and things of that nature. So uh, in terms of your own career and everything, now you said that you put it on hold for a minute because of having the family. So um, how many kids do you have and uh, how long did you put it on hold and what brought you back into deciding to get back into performance? Okay, so um, I had uh, had three children, and um, they're they're getting up in age now, so they're getting to where they can they can grow up. And but um, I had I had three children. I had a son and two daughters, and so um, it took a lot of my time. So for about I guess I guess it would have been about. And I was doing music in between, so I can't really say I quit completely, but I was doing a little bit. But just, uh, I became very focused when I moved here in 2009. And so that's when I kept doing the music consistently, even with the children. And so um, so they grew up around that. And they, they, enjoy, they enjoy that part. And, and they're very encouraging. Now, are either of them planning to pursue music as well, or is that something that none of your kids are thinking about, or is any of them already starting to lean toward performance? Because I know my friend, Reese Palmer, who's a musician, she's actually got a uh, younger kid now. I think the child might be less than a year old or maybe uh, something around that age, but her older daughter, um, Gracie, if I remember the name correctly, is she's almost part of the show. She'll jump on stage and she'll sing and do things of that nature. So I didn't know whether you had any proteges among those that are in your family. So is anybody kind of jumping onto the uh, performance bandwagon? Well, um, yeah, uh, sort of like uh, her daughter, Gracie. My son, Jonathan, is just, uh, he's wanting to do the music. He's feeling it. And so, but he's wanting to go into uh, rap, actually. Or, or like kind of a hip hop sound kind of thing. He's wants to do something like that. And so I do encourage him. He has a great voice. Um, he has also got the writing talent as well. So he's pretty good. At oh, it. good. And how do you feel that we're doing in terms of like music in terms of education? Because I know on this show as well as on some of our other shows here on the network, we've had a lot of folks say that they wish that music had a greater um, support from the community because they don't think that it's got enough support from the community in terms of like the schools actually teaching it the way that they used to so i just want to know some of your thoughts on that do you think that we're doing a good enough job of supporting our musical education or would you like to see improvements in that uh i would probably like to see uh some improvement um and and that would come from probably musicians like myself uh coming in um, us coming in and, and teaching people how to write and uh, you know you can just put your feelings down on paper and it might sound ridiculous but if you just keep at it it, it winds up being a song so um, everybody that wants to that really and truly in their heart wants to be a musician can do it they just have to to be determined to do that and you have to pray because it comes from God, and that's just how it is. Yeah, definitely have to have that spiritual background. I would agree with you on that. You got to have that spiritual connection and everything. 
Um, so you said that you discovered that at a very young age. So you were already telling your parents when you were very young that you knew you wanted to be on radio and you knew you wanted to be um, both a, a performer and I guess maybe an announcer as well. So you were telling them that when you first heard, who was the first person you heard that got you to think that? Um, I would say my grandmother uh, was very encouraging um, because, you know, she lost her opportunity and then she wound up having five kids raising them. And so I said, if I ever get the opportunity, even if I have kids, I'm just going to keep going because I didn't. It, it's sort of depressing when you let your dreams go. So it doesn't matter what age you are or anything about you, you just got to have confidence and just do the music. Yeah. Everybody deserves a chance. No, oh, yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. Everybody deserves that chance and everything. Um, and you said that the studio is your own studio, so you're owning the studio that you're in and everything. But I was wondering, as a woman entrepreneur and as a woman musician, do you sometimes still run into issues with that? Because I do know that out of the Me Too movement, there was complaints about women in terms of the way that they were treated by the music industry. So I would love to hear some of your thoughts on that as to whether it's gotten better, whether it's the same, or how you would like to see that improved. I'm going to tell you, since uh, since COVID, there's no problems on the way you're treated. I mean, I don't know whether, I mean, this everybody, very famous people have been talking to me since. Um, online. Very, very famous. And uh, out of respect, I don't want to bring up because I've got opportunities in the works. So I don't want to bring that up. But yes, uh, women get treated kind of bad sometimes. But um, you know, you got to just let people know, you know, what you're going to put up with, what you're not going to put up with. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So you have to sit there and stand firm on your ground and not let folks uh, step on you the way that some folks might want to do. I'm going to try to put up and we're going to do a share screen. So I'm going to see if I can't get one of your songs playing. I believe this is the one called um, Carolina or Leaving Carolina, the one about Leaving Carolina. Yeah, Christy Baker, Leaving Carolina. So I'm going to see if we can't get that up and if we can't hear some of this music of yours. So hopefully folks will... Uh, enjoy it and get a chance to hear it so if you give me a chance to get that together we'll uh, try to get that working but in the meantime what advice would you give to folks about performing those that are thinking about performing and would love to perform what advice would you give them um just be yourself um you're gonna feel nervous everybody does it's a natural um there's no need pretending like you're not nervous but just remember that you're doing something that you love. So just relax and enjoy it. Just enjoy it for what it is. And then, you know, don't get too caught up either in, in all the... Well, we're going to try to see if we can get know, the song going. Oh, there we go. Yes, uh, so we've got that going. So we're going to see if we can not get her song playing and uh, things along those lines. So you can just hold on one second. We're going to try to get the song going with uh, Christy playing. And this particular song is entitled, um, let's see if I can get the right title going. It's Christy Baker Leaving Carolina. So Christy Baker Leaving Carolina. And it's her song about when she left this area. Just another long night Well, nothing seems to work out right We had a fight All the pain drifts away Cause every time you called my name I was to blame You've got a sick, busted heart and a broken down smile. I've been walking for 50 damn miles. Wish somebody would give me a ride. I'm leaving Carolina, going back to Tennessee. Leaving the past behind, saying goodbye to you and me. One day I'll look back and see we were history. 
Right now the pain's too strong for me to even see. It's just another long day. Where nothing seems to go my way. That's a shame. All the pain drifts away. Cause every time you called my name, I was to blame. You've got a sick, busted heart and a broken down smile. I've been walking for 50 damn miles. Wish somebody would give me a ride. I'm leaving Carolina, going on back to Tennessee. Leaving the past behind, saying goodbye to you and me. One day I'll move back and see where we're history. Right now the pain's too strong for me to even see. Leaving Carolina, going back to Tennessee. Leaving the past behind, saying goodbye to you and me. One day I'll move back and see where we're history. Right now the pain's too strong for me to even see. Leaving Carolina Leaving the past behind Let's see if I can't remove that one. I hope folks heard that, but if not, I'll try to bring it back up again. But what was that song all about? And uh, just tell us a little bit about uh, that particular song, and I'll try to bring up one of the other ones as well. Okay. Um, the, when I when I came here, uh, I had no money. I was actually in my car, and uh, I had three kids in the car and a dog and I had a peg holding up my window so I started writing that song and that song was about um, I had some hardships and a, a very abusive marriage and so um, I just left and so and um, th at the time I felt like there was going to be dangers of you know abuse because there had been you know stalking and things like that and so like I just left and so I came out here not because of that. I came out here for the music. And so I wanted a new life. So, and it, it happened, but it didn't happen as quick as people think. You can't just come here and think it's gonna just fall in your lap either. Um, Cause it, it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot and you gotta really, really wanna do it. And what kind of fortitude did it take for you to actually uh have that energy to leave what sounds like it was a bad situation because a lot of times I know that folks will just stay in bad situations. I know even guys, because I've been in some situations that weren't all that great and uh, I know definitely women have. So what was it was that, that moment that just got you to go ahead and pursue your dream and to also leave that bad situation? Well, we had already uh, split up and there had been like things that could have gone on legally were uh, even to the point of attempted murder. So I had to leave. Um, I, I really had no choice. Um, I just had to plan it out and leave because I had tried to leave before and uh, I was stopped by him. And so I just kept, I planned out, it took me a year and something to plan out and I left and got the kids out of that too, because I didn't want them to have the pain that I had. So 
lucky for me, there was no, there, the children were not hurt. So, um, but I, I couldn't stay in something like that because uh, it was a matter of, do you want to live or do you not want to live? But I would say if you're in a situation like that, you need, you need to talk to somebody, somebody, uh, I mean, you can find me on the internet. If you can't think of anybody else you can talk to, um, you have to get out. The first time that somebody hits you or breaks something or uh, damages your property to control you, that's a super warning sign. So you you need to get out of that. So um, there's no need to stay with somebody who's going to actually physically hurt you. So yeah, you got to get out of those bad situations there's no doubt about that and it sounds like you had a very uh good way of doing that uh, just actually uh leaving that bad situation and uh not letting folks uh push you back into staying so i do know that sometimes folks will try to convince you to stay in even bad situations so did you get any of that pressure from either your friends or the other individual's friends and how did you cope with that believe it or not i actually got it from social services because uh, they actually, in North Carolina, I got that from them because they actually told me that he had every right to see the children. And so that meant I had to stay in the torture. So like a, a man who trusts to kill you and all that, and then you got, you've got to um, allow him to see the kids. Um, I could see tendencies like he was, like there was an instance where there was silverware um, and he just freaked out about the silverware in the middle of the night. I had the house perfect, but the silverware was not done. It was in the sink. And so it was, uh, there was a bed spread and it was freshly cleaned. So he spread out all the silverware that was dirty all over and wanted to wake up my daughter in the middle of the night to make her do that. And I told him no, and then we got in a big argument uh, the whole night. So there was things like that. He was a heavy drinker as well. So um, I think that plays a big part in that, like a super heavy drinker. So um, yeah, so I, I would just say uh, it was altogether a bad experience. And um, if you see things like that, it's uh, it can be very scary and you get very uh, intimidated to leave. I mean, you actually figure, well, maybe I've done something wrong, maybe, uh, you know, but it wasn't a big support system as far as leaving because people are like, if you try harder, if you do more, like if, if you know, there's not, there's not a lot of support. Um, as far as that goes, because you're thinking it too. You're like, well, maybe I could have done something different and he wouldn't act this way because they actually tell you that right after they hit you or something. And then they tell you they're sorry. And the reason why women stay, I think a lot of times is because they make it up to you. And so it, it, it seems unreal, like, oh, well, they're really sorry. I don't think they even probably even think about it. Well, as far as being sorry. it sounds like you've actually found a better situation now in the situation that you're in now. It sounds like a much more warmer relationship. So how did that come about? Because it sounds like you've actually got a much more supportive system that's going on now. Oh, I absolutely do. Um, uh, Bo, I met him uh, in 2011 and uh, he was just my guitar player. So we started working on the music. And it was about a year into the relationship. Um, we went out to see, um, and I can't even, I got to tell you, I can't even remember the guy's name right now. He was a big uh, producer um, out in Nashville. And we were out there and we we're walking through Opryland Hotel. And as we were walking, he was like, man, this, this place could kind of make you fall in love. And we're, so we just started dating after that, shortly after that. 
Well, so y'all are also working together. And I know sometimes that can be hard for folks to both work together and also maintain the relationship. So how do you have that balance of both work and romance and maintain that balance since y'all are working as a couple, but you're also producing music as a couple and working on music as a couple? Well, um, he kind of, I let him kind of do his own thing. He'll play, he'll come in here and he'll play uh, the guitar for hours and I'll just go work on the piano. And so we'll try to, you know, do that. And then, you know, if he doesn't want to do the music with me, I just uh, go and write my own stuff. So um, we're fine with that. And then when we have to do something like in, um, this past August, in August of 2019, we did a huge festival and um, it was out in uh, Alabama, I believe. It was, I can't remember the town, but it was called Hometown Festival. Um, they can look that up. I think I posted it out on Facebook a few times. Um, but like we did the Hometown Festival and uh, so when it's time to do something, I can always get them to do it. Um, but uh, he kind of does his own music and I kind of do mine and then we get together to do uh, the music. So it kind of works out that way. Sounds like that's a good way to maintain that relationship and also a great way to have that kind of working relationship. So that sounds like it's really working well for y'all. Um, I want to put on one of your other songs so that folks can hear a little bit more of your music. This one, I want you to tell them a little bit about before I put it on and it's entitled, My Heart is Breaking. So what is My Heart is Breaking all about before I bring that on here? So just tell us what that song is about. Um, it was just something that came into my heart and it just, it, I kept singing, um, for the longest time, I kept singing, my heart is breaking and, um, just that line. And then the other line came and then it was a few years actually. And then when Bo and I met, I finished writing it. So. Cool. Well, we're going to so let them hear a little bit of My Heart is Breaking and what that's all about. We've got some other songs that I'd like to you to comment on. But first, let's hear uh, My Heart is Breaking and uh, let them get a little taste of that. My Well, we might have to go back and try that again because that apparently did not want to work. So we're going to bring it back up one more time and see if it'll work this time. Otherwise, we'll go to one of the other songs. My heart is breaking With every step I'm taking and this road I'm on just keeps rolling on. But you left me alone now. So, what am I supposed to do? So, I'm going home now. There's nothing left to hold on to And every step, every step Every step I take Is the words you said, words you said That make my heart break And somewhere in my heart Is where you'll always stay That's how I know You'll never go away my heart is breaking My heart is breaking With every step I'm taking And no matter what to do just keep falling more in love with you But you left me alone now So what am I supposed to do? 
So I'm going home now Cause there's nothing left to hold on to And every step, every step, every step I take It's the words you said, words you said That make my heart break And somewhere in my heart Is where you'll always stay That's how I know You'll never go away And my heart is breaking Every step, every step, every step I take It's the word you said, word you said To make my heart break And somewhere in my heart Is where you'll always stay That's how I know You'll never go away And my heart Is breaking Wow, what a song, very moving song and definitely can see where folks would enjoy that kind of music and things of that nature. So definitely, I was already feeling the heartbreak over here. So I've definitely dealt with some heartbreak in my life and I can feel the uh, pain of that heartbreak that you were having there. So uh, tell our listeners where you get some of your inspiration from. Like I said, some of it is definitely coming out of your own life experiences and things of that nature, but is it all life experiences or do you ever find inspiration from other places as well? Um, sometimes I find imp- inspiration in um, other uh, people that I meet, uh, even strangers actually. Sometimes they'll tell me their stories and um, I'll just get an idea or something they've said. Sometimes, sometimes they can just say a few words. And um, um, burning up daylight is uh, one of those that um, that one. My dad used to say burning up daylight all the time. And so um, he was like, "Hurry up!" He was a military guy, so he's like, "Hurry up! You're burning up daylight. You need to hurry up." And so um, I said that to my kids one morning. My son goes, "Mom, you know you should write a song about that." And I was like, that's crazy. I don't, I don't know. And then I started singing it with a melody, like on the stairwell while I was talking to him. And he was like, you know, that song could really work. And that one was the probably the most popular of all the songs, um, Burning Up Daylight was. Well, it definitely gonna let folks hear that. So I'm gonna bring up Burning Up Daylight right now because that looks like a good way to uh, have some more conversation. So you're ready to bring up Burning Up Daylight and let folks check out what this song is all about. Cause uh, it looks like your dad had some very solid advice that he was giving you. So that's always good when dads or any uh, parents or just any older advisor gives you that kind of advice. Cause I know I even try to give good advice to my um, nephews cause I don't have any kids of my own but I do have nephews. So I try to give them good solid advice when I can. So let's check out uh, Burning Up um, Burn up daylight, I believe is the name of this song. So let's check out what this is all about and bring that up. I'm burning up daylight. And it did the same thing that it did last time. So we're going to make that change again and we'll see if we can't get burned up daylight one more time and see if we can't get this thing rolling right along. So hold on one second. We'll make that happen. And while we're doing that, uh, Hold on to see if we can't get some more comments from uh, Christy while I work on that uh, minor glitch that we're having. So, Christy, what advice, if you would, share that you would give to folks that are trying to break into the music business? Like I said, a lot of people will try to migrate to Nashville. They'll try to migrate to New York or they'll try to migrate to wherever. I oftentimes find that sometimes the best people are those that are doing the work right there in their hometown. So I was wondering what your thoughts are. Um, uh, things have really changed. So, um, you don't really have to move. Um, you can do a lot of, um, uh, internet, um, 
networking. Uh, you can just reach out to people. Um, there's some very good people out there. And uh, I have found that being from North Carolina, um, there's a lot of country music artists out here that are from North Carolina. So North Carolina, just knowing, um, you know how North Carolina people are. They're just all friendly. So if, if one, they're like family. Everybody's like family. So that part has helped. Um, also, if you just live in your hometown, just network, network, network. Um, put your music out there. Um, and if you're doing it for money, just forget that. So like, like it's not, you've got to love it past um, uh, what you're going to receive for it. Um, because sometimes it doesn't pay. Like uh, Spotify, I received this year, um, I think it was 1,037 downloads for one song. And um, I only got paid $10.37. So things like that. So you've got to be in you've got to be in it for the long haul because musicians do not get paid um, un unless they perform live um, very well anymore. On the album sales, it's not so much. And what about the uh, radio play? Do you find as an independent musician that you're getting the kind of support that you would like from radio or you're not getting that at all? So how do you feel about uh, radio play in terms of how that works? Um, I, I, I'm finding that fine. Everybody I reach out to usually plays the music or everybody who finds me usually plays the music. Um, and, um, they played, uh, my music on, and I thought it was going to be on the amateur hour course, cause that's the demo that you're listening to. That's not a fully produced album. So that's just a demo. And just on that demo alone, um, it was, uh, We've been in Port Perry, uh, South Australia on the radio, um, of course, by the internet. And um, I was on Trax FM and they played me before uh, Carrie Underwood, actually, which I was I was shocked. They gave me a lot of support. Um, it was a uh, um, country jukebox with uh, John Hannon and uh, out of Port Perry, South Australia. So it was nice. Um, they, th there's been a lot of support, uh, um, GHTR, which I worked for, for a year, uh, afterwards with, as a host, uh, they were amazingly supportive of the music and, um, there's been a lot, uh, of support, but, um, as far as, uh, um, concerts and things, I think this just has to be put off for right now because of COVID, but yeah, there's been a lot of support. And, and more now because the musicians are out of work. So people who wouldn't have normally talked to you um, actually are talking now. Yeah, I'm finding that even with like the interview format and everything, because both on this show as well as some other podcasts I do, I will reach out to folks on, like I reach out to you on like LinkedIn and uh, Twitter and different other stuff. And you're right. A lot of times, even some big name folks uh, will reply back because we're all in kind of like that lockdown mode. So even some of our busier celebrities find time to actually reach back to you and uh, say that they're interested in being on the show. I had a friend of mine, her show is Mona Rants and she had Mo Kelly on, the uh, great radio announcer who had a little spat with Roger Stone and everything. And I reached out to him on Twitter and was like, I'd love to you to be on my podcast. And he was like, sure. Just uh, send me the uh, information and the particulars and we'll make it happen. So that's just one example. So you're right. A lot of times folks are wanting to hear, share their stories and uh, let you uh, spread their message out. So because of us all being in lockdown, I do think that more and more of this is happening. But right now we're going to see if we can't make this thing work. So we're going to see if we can't get burning up daylight this time. So let's see if it works. I'm burning up daylight, wasting my time. I'm burning up daylight, wasting my time. I'm burning up daylight, wasting my time. Waiting for the day when you'd be all mine. Sitting in the 
in the back room Cry my eyes out Cause you know I loved you And there was no doubt Cause the lights are all on But baby nobody's home I'm still wondering why you left me here alone One day you'll come back and notice that I'm gone but I'm still burning up daylight trying to move on I'm burning up daylight Wasting my time Waiting for the day when You'd be all mine You run away hey, anytime you can. You never figured out how to be a real man. Cause the lights are all on, baby, nobody's home. I'm still wondering why you left me here alone. But one day you'll come back and notice that I'm gone. But I'm still burning up day by trying to move on. Baby, hold on before I'm long gone. You turn your love off and you turn your love on. The memory gets me through the night. Burning up daylight Cause the lights are all wrong But baby, nobody's home I'm still wondering why you left me here alone but One day you'll wake up and notice that I'm gone but I'm still burning up day, not trying to move on. Cause the lights are all wrong, but baby, nobody's home. I'm still wondering why you left me here alone. But one day you'll wake up and notice that I'm gone. But I'm still burning up day, not trying to move on. I'm still burning up days, I'm trying to move on. Wow. So what's the most difficult thing you found about the music industry, just in terms of your own career, and the most difficult thing that you've had to deal with? And also, on a different uh, angle, where do you see yourself at five to ten years from now in the music profession? Um... The di most difficult thing is getting past um, your own insecurities, I would say, um, really. Uh, even now, um, listening to this, I have to be 100% honest. Uh, I will say I'm picking out all the things that are wrong with this song, as opposed to, and that's just how singers think. Um, artists in general are very critical of what uh, they're doing. Um, but you know, just getting past that and just doing the music for the fun of it and the love of it um, is the hardest thing. And once you do that, um, you're just sharing um, your art with somebody. So there's no right or wrong. So, you know. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I know we got one of the shows we had uh, earlier was uh, talking about the warrior spirit. So it was actually a uh, young lady that was talking about uh, how the warrior spirit is very much uh, something that is needed in uh, all of us. So we might have to have that kind of like spirit of a warrior in order to conquer a lot of things. So they were talking about that on one of our other shows. Yes, and um, I, I do see the music going somewhere um, very soon. Hopefully, the COVID thing wears down, and there's some there's some things in the works that 
I actually can't talk about right now, or I don't think that I should, because I don't want to mess up a good opportunity, but it's big. Um, it's very big. Um, but that will last um, a couple of months, and um, it. Uh, I, I can tell you this: it would it would end at the Ryman um, if if it does proceed. So um, it's not a bad thing. That's a great thing. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Now I know I've got a friend of mine, Zach, who's a musician. He's actually a funk musician and he's got some great equipment. I've seen all this great equipment in the back of your studio as well or around your studio. And sometimes that's where I think folks get a little bit too concerned that might have the musical talents. They might feel that it's outside of their price range in terms of like getting the computers and getting the equipment and getting the kind of instruments. So what do you tell the folks that might be concerned about getting into music but are afraid that they don't have enough wherewithal or enough capital to get the latest guitar or the latest piano or the latest whatever? Okay, so first of all, um, just to be real with you guys, um, I have been the most broke person, and so I have been very poor in my life. And when we started this, and by the way, the furniture that you're actually seeing, the desk and the chair, um, and the table back there, all that stuff, that came, somebody gave that to me, okay? Um, but the uh, guitars were something that Bo uh, collected over time. Um, he would look, um, you know, like on Craigslist or somewhere and buy one, or he he had a family member that gave him. So this doesn't happen overnight. It's piece by piece. And the, um, the computer that I'm using, actually, it, it really did. It came from a pawn shop. And... Um, the uh, interface was bought brand new and things like that, but it does not take a lot of money. Um, I would say it takes a lot of uh, determination to 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 get the right things, and you can't just buy the first thing you see because um, you got to buy for quality, and um, you also want to keep the price low. So there's a. Uh, I just bought a piano. Um, and it was around the $600 piano, and I bought it for $250. So if you look hard enough, you can find um, affordable items that you can, you don't have to spend thousands. Um, <laughs> well, I'm sure that some of our listeners will be glad to know that. I know Nashville's got a real rich uh, music tradition with like the songwriter circles and things of that nature. But what about Nashville drew you to it? Like I said, you are from the Outer Banks, but something drew you to Nashville instead of going to New York or going to one of the other musical towns. So what about Nashville and the personality of Nashville drew you to it? I um, had a dream of um, singing on the Grand Ole Opry, and that's just something that I've always wanted to do. So to move out here, um, and my dream of being on the radio, it happened. So, um, and now I'm just waiting for it to sing on the Opry, but that's, that's something that I wanted to do, and I wanted to be around other musicians. So that's pretty what, much what drove me here. And... Um, I wanted to be around a lot of musicians, so that happens. Uh, there's uh, millions of people here with talent that is unbelievable. So it's 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 kind of fun sometimes. Um, since COVID, the streets are kind of empty sometimes, and I'm waiting to see um, everybody uh, healthy and moving about again and doing the music and enjoying it. Yeah, I know I'm looking forward to that too when we can actually see people doing live performances one more time. And uh, I know that there was even a festival here, the uh, Festival of the Eno, that usually is held outside in a big um, state park, but this year they did it virtually because uh, they couldn't have it in its usual big environment. So they did it at a uh, theater um, and the theater didn't have an audience or anything of that nature. So it was definitely different than it usually would be. So I'm with you. I'm definitely hoping that we're going to get back to the old way of doing things, but don't know when that'll be because they're still having these outbreaks in places. How is Tennessee doing? I know how North Carolina is doing. I think we're in uh, either phase two or phase three, but how is Tennessee doing in terms of uh, what you're hearing on the news in terms of fighting against the uh, COVID? Um, Nashville, uh, not so much. I'm about 15, uh, well, 12 miles um, outside 
of Nashville. Um, and it's, uh, that's where I live. And so um, basically it's pretty bad. Um, it's spreading at a, at a rapid pace, um, but um, there's not as many deaths um, as there was. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that um, people are recovering. Um, they're just getting really kind of ill. I don't know how it is. How is it there? Um, the things have been slowing down a little bit, but they've had days where it spiked up, days where it spiked uh, down. So it fluctuates. I think that uh, right now we're in like about, uh, I want to say we're still in phase two. We haven't gone to phase three yet. So it's like, I think a four phase uh, thing. And of course, people are trying to figure out, as I'm sure you are, because you've got kids and everything about the school system. So I know that right here, I think they said it'll be nine weeks. I don't have any, but I do have my nephews and my brother and those that are in public school will actually be having nine weeks before they go into the school and that's not even 100 sure because it might even get extended but right now they're saying nine weeks of online education but surprisingly some of the private schools are actually going to school and are going in in uh with COVID protocols and other things but they are going into classes so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out so there does seem to be a different way between the way the private schools are handling it and the way public schools are handling it but i know in durham orange county which is one county over and wake county it looks like most of that is going to be online so are your kids of school age and are they going to be going to school online or have y'all heard yet um my um son is 17 um so uh uh, basically he's done with school now so um but uh everyone out the, the daughters they're older they're uh, i have an 18 year old and i had a um teenage i was i was teenage pregnancy actually and um she's 27 so they're 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 grown now so uh, they're just coping with it in terms of the work world and not necessarily in terms of the school world and things of that nature. Were there any of the, of the fields that got really shut down, like restaurants or beauty salons or any of that stuff, or are they in fields that were not as impacted? Well, um, it's funny you said that. Um, I actually, uh, I actually clean houses um, in the um, and it's uh, expensive homes. I mean, expensive. Um, millions of dollars um, and I go in and clean their homes and stuff so I, I have had work the whole time um, which is a big blessing but a lot of people had to close down the restaurants and some of them which is sad to say they're permanently closed um, some of the businesses permanently closed um, and uh, I'm sure you heard about all the vandalism and things that we had and so um, it was just a few people. There was a peaceful riot. I mean, peace. I mean, peaceful protest, and then there was just a few bad apples that caused the whole thing. I think it was maybe ten people, maybe maybe less, that caused such a ruckus in Nashville. So they destroyed a lot of the property. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah, we are seeing some of that, and then we're also seeing different other kind of things happening with everything from the uh, different protests that are going on to COVID to every other kind of things. What has been your take on some of the other issues that are hitting our economy, not just the COVID, but like even some of the um, things with the Confederate monuments and Black Lives Matters and other things that are going on in the news, as well as the economic downturn. So as a musician, I know sometimes musicians also have have opinions about the rest of the world as well so just wondering what some of your thoughts were on that well i love all people and i think everybody should get along and like uh skip and hold hands but i know that's not gonna happen so i mean i have an unrealistic take everybody tells me that's not gonna happen but uh, i'd like to see people get along i mean and just not just be able to talk and not have so much hate and I just want um, I think everyone um, no matter race color belief deserves love and we should all just love each other I mean seriously we're here together and we all have blood <laughs> so I think everybody should just learn to get along no, I agree with you on that. And that's actually one of the themes that one of our producers, Anke, talks about regularly is one of the themes of IBM.TV is uniting uh, 
felt on a regular basis and finding ways to unite and connect folks and not necessarily do division. So that's what we're all about is trying to find unity and things of that nature. Because like I could say, thank you, one of our producers is out of India. We've got uh, the young lady, um, Alexandria, who does a musical show, Musical Cafe on Sundays, who's out of South Africa. And we've got um, Sasha, who is a... Uh, lives in Canada, but I think it's originally from the Russian area. And so we've got producers from throughout the world. And speaking of throughout the world, what would be like some of your wish list places that you would love to go on? I know that uh, sometimes they talk about bucket lists, but as a friend of mine has put it, I think it might have even been on one of our platforms before one of our shows. He didn't necessarily want to call it a bucket list because that implies that you've kicked the bucket. He just wanted to say the list. So if you had a list of places that you would go to, what would be on the places that you want to visit? You've already gone from the Outer Banks to Nashville. So both here in the States, meaning the United States, as around the world, because we do have listeners from around the world. What's on your wish list of places to go to? Well, I've been um, a lot of places in the U.S. So I've been to around the 28 states uh, in the United States um, and Canada. Um, I would like to go to, uh, because I'm a beach girl kind of, um, and during high school, so I would like to go to like the Virgin Islands. Um, just I love the ocean. So and and it's it's good to write music like on the beach or something. It's just relaxing. And uh, also, uh, Europe. Okay. Just totally would like to go there. Yeah. And what is it about the ocean that relaxes you? Because like I said, you grew up on the ocean. You definitely have talked about how the ocean is definitely plays a part in your life. But what is it about the ocean that relaxes you? And you're now you're in Nashville, which is inland. So how often do you try to get back to the oceans, whether that's the Outer Banks, where so I guess some of your family is still at, or wherever? So what do you say about uh, the whole notion of the ocean? Um. When you're sitting on the beach and you can feel the wind, you know, on your face and the sand, and um, it just, it's a peaceful feeling, um, and you feel connected with God, and so uh, you just, I don't know, the emotions flow, and then you start writing, you know, it clears your mind, even on a stressful day, that, but um, as far as getting back, um, my uh, dad has only seen me three times since I moved here in 2009 and that's because he came here um uh, it, Nashville really is a fast-paced uh living so it it is fast-paced living so um sometimes you don't get time to go take a vacation or something something happens and you can't get away or especially doing music um raising my son and um my daughter still lives with me at 18 so i have her too and so um, all that just you don't get away right now um music and work and all that stuff keeps you busy well, like I said, we've got folks that listen from all over the world. So I know you're in negotiations with some that you have hinted at that you don't want to let folks know about. But if you could work with anybody in the world, because we might have a listener that might know them, because I know Alexandria knows some big time producers as does some of our other uh, producers and founders here with IBM.TV. So if there was like a wish list of somebody that you could work with and uh could make that happen who would be on that wish list so like give us some names of people that you would love to work with that you have not worked with but that are on the wish list of folks that you would like to have in your career path um probably uh i would say maybe maybe dolly parton um maybe um let's see I would say Luke Bryan, Jason Aldean, um, maybe uh, Dirk Bentley. Um, uh, I talked to Jimmy Wayne. I would like to do some music with him. Um, also, uh, I have talked to Joe Bonsall of the Oak Ridge Boys about writing with him. And the thing was, before the COVID, he was so busy. So I'm hoping that... Uh, do that eventually but he said he didn't want to do that so but he was he was fully on tour at the time and one time we almost got to meet but then i was 
one place and he was another, so it didn't happen. So. Gotcha. And just in terms of the cautionary note, what are some of the things that I do want to put on at least one or two or more of your songs? But as a cautionary note, what are some of the things that you think folks should be aware of when they go into the music business? I mean, I know that sometimes even older folks that are doing music will find bad deals. Like I know I've got a friend of mine that was talking to a management team and the management team has not been all that fair to him in terms of the way that they treated him. And so he's actually left that uh, kind of management uh, idea. But just sort of some of the things that you would tell folks to be concerned about and that you have observed in your own career that you would let folks know they need to be aware of. Um, sometimes when you sign a record deal, it's almost like opening a loan account, um, in all honesty, I'm gonna be 100% honest. And so if you don't make the money back, then you have to, because I had so many offers in the beginning, um, which I, at the time I regretted not taking, but now looking back, I know that I made the right decision because, um, with Burning of Daylight, um, they were trying to convince me to give up my rights to the song. Um, so you don't want to do that um, because it may wind up being much bigger than you thought. So, um, and uh, you don't need to sign a record contract because that that puts you in a state sometimes where you, and, and there are some good record companies, don't get me wrong, there's some fair ones, but for the most part, if you sign a, with a record label, they want you to produce the music that they want you to do. And so your musical freedom ends um, and you have to be an image or of what they want you to be. Um, so um, you're no longer, you no longer have as much freedom as you would. Well. And do you think that uh, you would uh, urge people to go the independent route or would you urge them to try to sign with a label? Because I know a lot of folks are doing, particularly in this age that we're in, and this was even before COVID, more folks were going to, like you mentioned, Spotify, or they were going to Reverb Nation, or there were even folks that were going to YouTube and not just some of the sites that I'm aware of, but they were definitely going more of the independent routes. And I know even some of our big time musician folks like Prince and others when they were living were encouraging folks to go independent. So what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that there should be, uh, would you encourage folks to go more independent or would you encourage them to try to find a mainstream label? It depends on the label and it depends on the contract and the type of people and how well you know the people that you're gonna be working with. Um, it, it would depend on uh, a lot of things before you would sign, you know, sign something because you, you've got to make sure that you have rights in it all. You don't want to sign away everything. So it would depend. Um, I um, currently am independent. Um, and so I like that because I'm not being told um, what I'm going to perform and things like that. Um, I, I just like doing the music for the love of it, so uh, and sharing that with others. Um, which, and when I first started doing that, I actually was surprised that there was more than one person that actually wanted to listen. You know, so you don't know. I mean, you may put your music out there, and you may see the same thing I did that people really can relate to a lot of it. So, just I wouldn't worry so much about signing with the label especially at first maybe later in the game but like you you need to know who you're working with um before you do that yeah that makes a lot of sense um really quickly changing the topic just a little bit i was going to put on the song three minutes and i'm sitting there going like what does three minutes mean i mean is that three minutes to boil an egg is that three minutes to love is that what exactly does three minutes have to do with anything so explain to us a little bit about what three minutes is before we play it because like i said that title just kind of threw me off i'm going like i don't know it could be three minutes to pull it well, my, but my brother my brother told me it was three minutes before i run out of gas because i always wait too long to fill up the tank oh so, so he he jokes the song too but um three minutes um it's just something that i came up with um it's like you've got three minutes to tell me what's been wrong, you know, because the time limit and just three minutes was kind of catch a thing for me. So I just 
went with that and so um, well, we're gonna let it check out what three minutes is all about and like i said three minutes can have all kind of connotations about everything from love to life to whatever and um i actually do the mass transit thing so i don't have to worry about three minutes till i'm out of gas but i do have friends that i've traveled with so i know what that's like when you're sitting there and you're going like oh wait a minute if we don't find a gas station soon we will be pushing this bad boy <laughs> So let's bring up uh, three minutes and I'll get ready to do that right now. So hold on, we'll see if we can't get three minutes and see what this is all about. I've been waiting up all night long for you to come back home. I sit and think about how we used to be. But I won't let it get me down the next time you come around. And you could be on the losing side of me. And you got three minutes to tell me what went wrong cause too many times you left me here alone one day you'll miss me when i'm gone three minutes to tell me what went wrong on the count of one two three you seen the last of me on the count of three two one all i'm gonna do is run goodbye Pick me up just to pull me back down. You break my heart and you're messing around. You try to lie, but it's all over town. Well, the next time you see me, I'll be stronger than I used to be. And you could be on the losing side of me. And you've got three minutes to tell me what went wrong cause too many times you left me here alone and one day you'll miss me when i'm gone three minutes to tell me what went wrong on the count of one two three you seen the last of me on the count of three two one all i'm gonna do is run goodbye <laughs> about how we used to be all 
Yeah. You know, I'm not just hearing uh, country influences. I'm hearing some other influences in your music as well. So who are the other musical styles that you think you're influenced by? Like I said, you mentioned that your son wants to be a uh, hip hop artist, for lack of a better term. And uh, definitely, I think I was even hearing a little bit of blues licks and other things. So definitely, what would you say were some of your musical style influences? Because I think that I've in the, all these songs that we've heard from you, I think I've heard different styles of music influences. So I was wondering if you could tell us who some of the musical style influences are. Now, um, not that I can hear this in that in our in our music, but I can tell you that there is absolutely uh, when you were bar bringing up artists, uh, I'm, I was sad to say that I didn't mention it, but um, like Lionel Richie, like. <laughs> I actually like his music so much. I probably would pass out if I got to work with him. Um, just it's just something about he's just phenomenal with the writing and the um, everything. You know, you know how good he is. Yeah. I mean, it's just insane good, and um, he's so comfortable with it too. It's it's amazing, but um, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I've definitely had the pleasure of seeing Lionel Richie perform when I was in college. So if you talk about dating yourself, that was in the 80s. But I did see him performing when I was at Marquette and saw him perform at least once. I might have seen him more than that, but definitely have seen him perform once. Ironically, when I saw him, he had a very well-known drummer playing with him because at that time he had uh, Sheila E performing with him. So Sheila E was the drummer on that particular uh, concert. So yeah, Sheila E has definitely been in the game for a long time as, as Lionel. So I had the pleasure of seeing both of them. And I've seen Sheila since that time. I'm not sure that I've seen Lionel since that time. I have to think back, but I can't think of a concert that I've been to where I saw Lionel other than that one time. Of course, I've seen him on TV and other places, but not in person that I can recall. But I agree that Lionel is an amazing musician. And then I know we've got folks here that are big time fans of uh, Bobby McFerrin. So he's another great musician that has that kind of uh, inner soul that is still out there performing. So definitely, I think that there are some amazing folks out there, but uh, definitely that's what I was thinking as you were saying that, that. but I was just wondering, are there any other kinds of like um, styles of music that you would really like to do? Or do you want to stay pretty much on the country, soft rock kind of flavor? Or are there other styles of music that you would like to experiment with? Um, I'm pretty open um, with the music, so uh, uh, I actually thought about um, doing like the rap country thing, um, finding another rap artist doing that when I came out here, um, just so much with raising the kids and stuff, it just kind of got pushed to the side at that time, and so um, for about a year or two, and then I just like, it just seemed like that kind of died down with the rap in the country but like I like that and so like uh, I'll be open to that and uh, pretty much open to anything except for um, and I wouldn't mind working with heavy metal artists but like as far as doing heavy metal it's probably not something that that I particularly would be crazy about because you know um, it depends <laughs> but I'm open to every kind of music so uh, um, definitely uh, John Cougar Mellencamp, you know, stuff like that, um, uh, Tom Petty, uh, all kinds of things like that, um, Sheryl Crow, um, I just, I like a lot of classical, like, older music. Oh, yeah. And how important do you think music is to our society in general? Because I'm one of those people that just thinks that music is actually something that can calm us down no matter what we're going on in the world. And of course, we've got so many things happening in the world, whether that's the COVID crisis, whether that's the um, economic terror terms that some people are facing, whether that's the various other kind of uh, turmoils that are going on in society. But I just find music to be very soothing. I was wondering what some of your thoughts were as to how um, important music is to you just in terms of dealing with life? Um, if, if, seriously, if they ever took music away, it would just be one boring, uh, miserable, you know, kind of thing. And so uh, basically it would be uh, empty. And so like music to me to, uh, 
is very relaxing. I can turn on, like, say, like, some Billy Joel. I, like I said, I like classical music that's way before my time. So I, I listen to a lot of uh, Billy Joel and stuff like that, and it just relaxes me. Um, and uh, like I said, Lionel Richie, um, James Brown, all that stuff, I, it, it does, it relaxes me and so um without it i think that um and and sometimes i think that there's not enough original material out there right now um which there needs to be people need to start uh, being themselves because they're just fine the way they are so um if they did that and shared their music um and and weren't trying to be something that they weren't then um we would have more variety as well and that would be very nice um so i like to see the music keep growing and um the new young artists i'd like to see them be original and not try to you know for money wise or anything they're fine the way they are they they've got the talent and just do their own thing yeah it's interesting you say that because i know my friend zach who's got a show has actually got two shows here he's got um the funk music show or um Funk from the front seat, which he does on Saturdays, and then he's got um, funk music with Zach on Sundays. But one of the things he talks about is, with a lot of his musical guests, is how processed the music is, and that's a thing that he complains about: is that it just seems like it's too processed and it's too, um, like, uh, almost clinical, like the way that uh, people would describe a hospital and everything. So it's not it have that same kind of vibe. That the old music did of say the 70s the 80s and some people might even argue the 90s but definitely the 70s and uh, 80s and for sure the 60s but i was wondering do you find that as well that a little bit of the music is a little bit too um overly produced that's the word i was looking for overly produced yeah um as as amazingly as they are are talented um out there um sometimes i think that it would sound even better if it wasn't all trying to sound sort of the same um, production wise um because they're super talented but then you know you get into the label or whatever and they say well it needs to sound like this and then you listen to another artist and uh, i'm sure that's not exactly what they probably wanted but like that comes with you know sometimes with labels and things they'll put you in that um kind of position where it's we're gonna get you to work with this guitar player um that's what happened to me um they wanted to give me a very famous guitar player that was like uh, what was he uh cma award winning guitar player and um they wanted to give me him and they didn't want Bo to play on the album so that would be a different sound and so um, they said he could play live with me but he would not be able to play on the album. Um, and, and I thought, well, then I'm gonna sound like everybody else. So um, basically, I, I think it's too, um, I, I guess the word would be, not that they don't have talent, any of them don't, they have wonderful talent, way surpasses mine in, in many senses, but like um, they, um, they are doing too much of a uniform thing. Um, and people need the versatility that they used to have. Um, it does help. Uh, it helps with life to hear a variety of music like we had in the past. And I'd like to see more artists come out and have more variety. Yeah, definitely. Now, how open would you be to somebody trying to like um, mold you into whatever that image is because I do know that sometimes that's something that musicians fight against because you know they might have like they want the person to have uh, blonde hair or they want them to have tattoos or whatever they might try to do in terms of creating that image but it sounds to me like you're a very strong musician and they're your own values so I'm thinking that you would probably not do that but how would you handle that if they were trying to mold you into a certain image the labels and everything well, some things in order to, you know, look your very best have to be done. Um, but as far as changing my whole outlook and changing everything about me, I, w I, w I don't think I would allow that. Um, but, you know, if they wanted to, like, 
take me to the salon or something and do my hair a little bit, make it look a little bit better for television. That that's that's one thing. But if uh, they wanted to change my hair color, my eye color, um, put tattoos on me, or um, you know, make me and it, I don't think it really matters if they want you to wear uh, uh, dress as long as it doesn't compromise, you know, your morals. Um, but uh, I would stick to my morals um, overall. And there's some things that I can bend on and some things that I would, would say no to. Well, if we're going to wrap up everything, if you could put on your uh, crystal ball, and I asked you that earlier, but I was going to just say, if you could put on your crystal ball, what would you like uh, Christy to be five years from now and 10 years from now in terms of where you would like to see your career going at that time? Um, definitely um, want to be on the Opry and um, performing more live TV performances. Um, things like that. Um, I would like to be doing that. I'd like to share some of my music and especially some of my experiences and pain um, with other people that it might help. And so, uh, and I just love the music and I totally love people. So that works out. So I can definitely understand that. And that sounds like a great thought and everything. I did have this one other song that I wanted to play, which is the one about the winter. And of course, we're in the middle of the summer. So some people might need that winter kind of vibe going. So tell us what the winter song was all about and why you did a song about the winter. I assume you wrote it in the winter and not in the dead of the summer, which is where we're at now. And then after we play that winter song, I'd like you to wrap us all up by giving us any final thoughts that you'd like to share just on life in general. So like I said, if you got any final thoughts that you'd like to share or words of encouragement in any way, then that's how we'll wrap everything up. But tell us first about the winter song and how it came about. Um, I was taking a walk. I was really cold. <laughs> And uh, I wrote uh, Winter Wishes, California Nights, and I wake up to the Tennessee light. So um, I just like wrote that. And then um, actually, if you listen to the song, you'll be surprised that it might mention summer in there, actually. All right, well, we'll go check it out and see if summer gets a mention in the song. So hold on a second, we're gonna bring up Winter Wishes. Winter who wishes California nights And I wake up to the Tennessee lights I don't know if it's wrong or it's right But I think you should stay the night The days get colder and the nights get longer I'm feeling lonely but I'm getting stronger Why do you have to go away? I really wish you would stay. California, you know I'm missing you this morning. And I'm crying for ya. Tears like a river pouring. And I'm freezing in Tennessee tonight. But in my sleep I'm dreaming. Of California's morning light. Summer dreaming, California nights, and I wake up to the Tennessee lights. I need you with me. Where have you been? But when I wake up, it's cold again. The days get colder and the nights get longer. I'm feeling lonely, but I'm getting stronger. Why do you have to go away? I really wish you would stay. California, you know I'm missing you this morning. And I'm crying for ya. Tears like a river pouring And I'm freezing in Tennessee tonight But in my sleep I'm dreaming 
of California's morning light. California, you know I'm missing you this morning, and I'm crying for ya. Tears like a river pouring, and I'm freezing in Tennessee tonight. But in my sleep, I'm dreaming of California's morning light. All right. So do you see yourself ever uh, coming back to the uh, Carolina area or do you think you're gonna make home permanently there in the Tennessee area just outside of Nashville? Or do you see yourself eventually migrating back to North Carolina, probably with Bo and the rest of the family, but do you see yourself coming back or do you think that you're gonna make your home there in Nashville? Um, I really think that we're gonna, um stay here we actually bought a house together we've been together now for um, almost uh, nine years so um, I really think we'll stay um, we're really happy here so I think we will stay sounds like a great place for you to be this particularly being around all those other great musicians so as we wrap everything up like I said earlier if you want to share any kind of positive thoughts or any kind of like good vibes that you'd like to give folks this is the opportunity to do that the floor is yours so if you have any final thoughts or any uh, good wishes that you want to give folks as uh, we close out the show then I would love to hear those um I would just say uh I love you all. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. Um, if you're working on music, just do not give up. And this is this is all temporary. What we're going through, even if it takes a couple of years, um, everything will work out. And um, just um, prayers to you all. And definitely, if you're in an abusive or bad relationship, seek help and get out of that. Yep, that's very good. You definitely have to do that. And uh, we didn't actually touch on that, so I guess I will not quite end. But if I remember correctly, you also have a foundation that you're also working on as well. Because before we get off, can you just tell folks a little bit about what that's going to be about? Because I think part of what it is is going to address that is the whole concept of trying to help people. Well, what it is is uh, the idea is to, um, in the middle of downtown Nashville, what I wanted to do was start a, um, a actual big foundation um, where um, abused women and children can come down, come inside um, with a bunch of us other musicians and we can um, sit down and they can write down their feelings and we can teach them how to write songs as a way of musical therapy. So um, for me, um, being able to write has tremendously helped me um, in expressing and getting rid of that pain and so it's it it's it's a godsend so um to share that with them and help them out and so also i wanted to do like some sort of a shelter but i wasn't sure um how to be able to do all that it does take quite a bit of funds but um it was called bruise not broken foundation so um i didn't have enough support at the time um Maybe I wasn't well known enough to start it yet, but um, I would like to start it back up and um, and help as many people as I possibly could. Well, and if folks are listening or uh, catching this at a later time and want to uh, reach out to you to help you get that foundation off the ground, um, how would they reach out to you? Um, and also, have you started any sort of Patreon campaigns or any other campaigns around this? So is there ways that folks can reach you if they're interested in helping you both with the foundation as well as with your musical career in general? Um, if they want to help um, or if they want to reach me for any other reason, um, it, it can be uh, a Christy Baker 7. That's uh, C-H-R-I-S-T-Y Baker, B A. K E R um, seven at yahoo.com. They can email me and I can be reached there. I, they, they can also find me on 
Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, pretty much every news, I mean, outlet, um, LinkedIn. Um, there's a lot of, they can reach me in a lot of ways. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead. And what's the name of the studio? If they want to try to find you if they're in the Nashville area and want to try to get studio work with you, what's the name of your studio? Well, um, this is in our home, so this is our home studio. So um, if they wanted to work with us, they can just reach me by the email and then I can reach out to them. So um, this is just our home studio. So it's like one room jam packed full of musical equipment and stuff. But we have had artists come in and work with us before um, at our home. Sounds wonderful. Sounds like I'll definitely have that uh, open kind of environment in terms of like not just getting your own careers off the ground, but also helping others. And it definitely sounds like you are very much committed to trying to help folks that are going through a uh, troubled relationship. So I said that, that last thing was going to be the last thing, but I think this will be the last one. Once again, if you could give advice to those that are going through abusive situations and how they could get out of it or what you feel that they should do to get out of it. I think that that's how we'll close out the show. So like I said, if you've got any advice for folks that are going through abusive situations, and we know that that isn't always the women, that sometimes men can go through abusive situations as well. So no matter what the gender is, of course, we do know kids are oftentimes involved in those. So any advice that you've got for folks, no matter their gender, their race, their religion, their creed, or even uh, their age, that would be greatly appreciated. So any advice that you've got that you want to share, Christy? Um, sometimes, uh, you know, they just can't get away. And so they'll try, it is in my case, you'll try to get away and then, you know, he'll find out you're leaving and then jump in the back of the truck and like threaten to kill you, you know, things like that. So you've got to plan your time. You've got to, you, you've got to be sometimes patient and try to avoid the arguments in the process. And so, and then, you know, opportunities and trust me, prayer is a big deal. And God, God can help you get out of these things. Um, but you just, you can't look at the situation you're in. You just got to trust him and he will help you get through it. But you also have to talk to people and uh, get the help that you need because there are people who care um, despite what that person might be telling you, which they'll isolate you first so that you're not, you know, so I would just say um, plan to get out. Um, it does not get better um, after you've been hit several times and you start thinking, well, maybe it'll change. No, it doesn't. It doesn't change. It gets worse. And uh, you wouldn't believe how bad it, it does get. So don't let it get that far and uh, get out as early as you can, I would say. Um, when you, when, it's not okay for anybody to hit anybody um, and be physically abusive. Definitely not. Well, and sometimes it seems like you just have to walk away because I know that's what happened in one of the situations I was in. I was feeling like it was an abusive situation and they left for work one day and I left the other way because I just felt that there was too much going on and you sometimes have to just literally walk away. Yes, that's, that's the right way to do it. Hey, look, if uh, they're not there to stop you from leaving, then you can go. So, um, yes, yeah, sometimes you have to wait it out. Um, but yeah, I got impatient one day when there was a fight and I tried to jump in the truck with the kids and he jumped in the back of the truck and then was pounding on the back of the window of the truck with the kids screaming. And so that was a bad scene. And so I learned right then that I have to just wait it out. And so that's what I did. Yeah, looks like you have definitely um, have grown a lot through the process. Unfortunately, that you had to go through that in order to uh, develop the way you have, but it definitely has made you a stronger person and probably a better person. And it's definitely uh, helping you even in your musical career. So Christy, I want to thank you for being on the show and I'll, I'll have to get you back on. I know that a lot of our other uh, folks that we do regular shows with have also dealt with a lot of these kind of issues. So we might want to have you back on one of our other shows as well, or definitely on my show again, but uh, I've definitely enjoyed the conversation and I want to thank you for being so open both about your musical career, but also sharing the uh, pain that you went through. So definitely I appreciate you being a guest.
All right. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much, Mark. I appreciate it so much. No problem. Well, that's going to wrap it up on this edition. Uh, this was a special edition of the radio show with Mark Lee, and we had our guest, Christy Baker, on. So she was definitely an amazing guest, and we look forward to hearing more from her. As you could hear, the music is just great. I was, as you could tell, popping my head and enjoying the great musical sounds. So I am definitely looking forward to hearing more tunes from her as she continues to develop this great music, some based on her experiences, some just based on life in general, and some based that she had on conversations with other folks. So, you know, oftentimes music can find its inspiration at all kinds of places, both in our own lives as well as on things that we are inspired from, from other people's stories as well. So sometimes the music is based on our own stories and sometimes it's based on stories that we have heard from others. So she is definitely doing a great job with the music and I'm looking forward to hearing more of these stories. And I'm also hoping that there's a center that she is trying to create as well as the foundation will be able to help many women that have gone through these kinds of abusive situations because we do know that with all going on in the world we need to work all ways to heal and it seems like she is doing that she is being a healer both in the sense of with her music as well as some of her ambitious goals with what she's trying to do to help others that have been through similar situations like hers. So on that note, we're going to wrap up this edition of the radio show with Mark Lee. And I look forward to seeing y'all on upcoming editions as well. So that'll wrap up this edition, but we will be back. You know, we usually do these on Mondays between the hours of, uh, well, we've extended it now. So it's like between the hours of two and five. And we're also going to start doing some things on Wednesday as well. So definitely keep that in mind and keep listening. We're going to keep on telling great stories, but sharing important messages as well so definitely want to thank everybody for uh tuning in and listening and don't forget you can catch it on our ibm.tv youtube site as well as our facebook sites and some of our other sources as well such as twitter and other ways that you can go out and catch this in replay so definitely want to thank those that have been listening and those that will be listening in its uh replay version because we often ask find that we have quite a few more listeners in the replay version that we do on the original recording. So just want to thank everybody for tuning in and definitely get out there and learn more about Christy Baker and her amazing music. So on that note, we'll see y'all the next time. Size about 1.5.